All right, everybody, here we are for episode two of the Bro to Pro podcast. We're really excited to have our first guest on the show today, uh, Vincenzo Massoni. Did I say that right? Yes, you got it. That okay, was. excellent. Right on, first try. First <laughs> All right, man. So, uh, yeah, so what's going on with you right now? Like, what, what's happening in your life right now? Uh, life is happening. Life yeah. is happening. Um, just got engaged two weeks ago to my. Uh, my girlfriend for three yes. years that was a big step for me uh, I was really proud to be able to do that and you know put bodybuilding aside for a minute and you know put put her first because she's always going to be first um and yeah we just put a deposit down today on a wedding uh 2021 December so so life is happening man I'm 26 I'm getting up there you know <laughs> yeah, Kidding. big uh, big congratulations to you on that, man. Well, thank you, bro. I actually uh, got engaged myself this year, and we set our wedding date for October of next year. So, um, well, it's uh, it's a lot happening at once. Though. You start that wedding planning, and you make you pick the venue. You got to make your deposits like a year or more in advance, or you won't get anything you want. Yeah, man. Do you uh, yeah. do you have a date picked out? Yeah, we're gonna do uh, December fifth. Uh, 2021. Uh, so two years from now, and uh, yeah, we went to the venue. We went to like three or four venues. Uh, three venues. Then we narrowed it down. So yeah, she went today. I I had to work and work out and stuff, but I've already seen it. And we put the deposit down, and that's it, man. No turning back. So you must. So you know you got a budget for a, a tux for you, right? Because it's gonna have to be like custom out the ass. Man, I already put a couple of G's aside for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'd say you did, man. Well, I know, uh, I know, Randy got some questions for you to get us started. So why don't you go ahead, Randy? Oh well, you know, I just wanted to uh, give you the opportunity uh, to for people to get to know you. You know, uh, like, like you know, the 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 fun stuff. Like, how long have you been training? How did how did you get started? Because uh, I noticed on your Instagram, you made a post about working out in your uh, your dungeon and you mentioned training alone and training with your father and that uh that something that uh, how i got started as well so i'd love to hear more about that too yeah so basically um i started training at 14 years old well that's when i picked up my first uh weight i guess you could say um and yeah you know that that post it meant a lot because i could have kept going on and on and on about it that's why i said uh I'm not going to talk about it right now, uh, but I'll, I'll say it here firsthand. You know, training, working out has definitely changed my life. Um, I wouldn't say I was a bad kid or, you know, anything like that, but I was definitely not headed in the right path. Uh, and, and I wrote there, ch training has saved my life um, and put me in the right direction because I don't think I'd be here right now without it. Um, you know, I started training at 14 in my basement. My dad used to work in Brooklyn. Um, well, if you guys are familiar, I'm from Long Island. So Long Island and, you know, Brooklyn, it's not too far off. So he used to work in Brooklyn, and he used to be um, like a meter reader. So he would go in the basements, read the meter, turn it on or off, and there would be weights down there. And he would just start bringing them home. And he was like, yeah, Vincenzo, tell me come throw around some weights with me. And I'm like, nah, fuck that shit, man. Like, I don't want to work out. I want to play Gears of War and, you know, text girl, you know, all the stupid shit, right? So then one day I was like, you know what, man? Because, you know, again, I'm going to say it on here because I know people want to hear it. I was bullied. Believe it or not, this guy was bullied. <laughs> oh, um, shit. <laughs> bullied for a couple of years. Uh, so were, were you, when, you were, when you were a kid, were you a small kid or were you above a, average I, height? I was 5'11", 130. Let's just say that. So picture yeah. that with me, with long hair. So the, <laughs> opposite, so the total opposite of now. I can't even imagine you with long hair, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to post some photos. I think people will get a kick out of Oh, it. you got to do that, man, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, as you were saying. But, um, you know, one day I just came home like, Dad, let's go. Let's start. Let's, let's, let me get a work. I was like, whoa, what happened a couple of weeks ago? You said, you know bench pressing is, is is there's no point why why get so strong and those i'm like let's just go so i started working out and then man religiously every day this was 
sixth grade, right, third, 14, every day I'd come home, throw my backpack, obviously wouldn't even think about homework or any of the stuff we should have been doing, right downstairs. And now I lived in a, a house that wasn't as big as my last house. And obviously now I have my own place with my girlfriend, but it was a cellar. So basically it was like maybe six foot ceilings. Now at the time I'm like 5'11". Now I'm 6'2". But I had to almost wear like a hard hat down there. But I would go down there every day religiously and just go through the magazine, flex or muscular development, whatever it was and find an arm routine or something I could only use with dumbbells or a barbell. That's all I really had. And then, you know, as the year goes on, years goes on, my dad says, oh, we'll get you a bow flex or something along the lines of that. So it just started gradually building up to that. And then I guess I just had this burning desire, burning passion and vision in my head of what I wanted to look like one day. Obviously, I didn't know I would look like this, but... I just wanted to get bigger, stronger, so no one would fuck with me. That was the point. And then, you know, sports, I got into football. I started playing football at nine years old. But, again, I was very, very small. And then, um, you know, I just – I saw the size coming quick. And, naturally, I got up to 100, no, 235 pounds by 19 years old, naturally. So, that was with nothing, a little protein, this and that. And then, um, you know, it's – uh. It's history from there, man. So how often were you training through your teenage years? Was that like a consistent five days a week thing, or was it hit and miss? It was every day. Seven <laughs> days. No days same, off. You know, the same routine, arms, you know, chest. It was just the same thing. I don't think I actually stepped into a real gym besides a basement till I was 18. So the working out obviously helped you with football a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so did you play football, like, just through high school, or did you play any college ball, or? So, I played up until my freshman year of uh, college. I uh, went away. And the first play of the game, and the first play of the game, I broke my hand, split it down the middle. I, oh, shit. I was getting pissed off at the end, and this lineman wouldn't let go of me, and I just uppercut him in the top of the head. And it split, it split my hand down the middle. So, you know, I was in the hospital that night and the whole nine, and um, they casted me up, things like that. And um, I was in study hall one day because I didn't remember, I didn't get into bodybuilding until I was 21. So that was only five years ago. So I was in study hall, you know, we're supposed to be doing our homework. Again, I wasn't the best student, but I just can't sit there and have people tell me stuff. That's besides the fact. So I'm sitting there on YouTube and pumping iron pops up. And I'm like, hmm, click. And I was fucking fascinated with Ferrigno, Lou Ferrigno. Not even Arnold. I was fascinated wow. with Ferrigno. His size, um, his, his uh, you know, he was the underdog. He worked out with his father. I was like, what the fuck? Is that, <laughs> that could be me one, you know? <laughs> that could be me one day. And I literally, the next week, that within that week, I called my parents, say, hey, no more football for me. I'm going to do bodybuilding this is what what's bo bodybuilding what do you mean like Arnold what's that stuff like that I said <laughs> so, yeah and I remember showing my dad a picture of Ronnie Coleman I showed my dad the phone I was like here that's what I want to look like he goes he just looks at me like are you fucking nuts basically <laughs> like he didn't even say anything but now obviously they're my, they're my number one fans and all that but at the time it's a little weird you know you you want to look like this crazy freak you know big guy like I mean, even at the time, I said, I'll probably never even get to half that size, but let's, let's give it a whirl. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can totally relate to you. Just, like, the whole thing about quitting sports and telling your parents and then – and just, like, trying to get them to kind of take you serious sort of thing. Like, it takes a bit of time. You know, they really got to see you put in the work and, and, and like, to really understand what, where it's going and what the whole thing is about, right? Oh, what about the first time you put the little underwears on in front of them? Oh, buddy, yeah, <laughs> that was that was a tough one, man. They no laugh that hard in their life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, what happened to you? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My mom was real worried about me. She was like, "Why would you want to do that? What's going on? Like, you know, not just uh, physically, but what's going on in your head that you want to do that?" And then they, uh, you suffer through prep, and they uh, they wonder why why would you do something like that to yourself? You have to have a conversation with them too, right? So. 
uh, being as a competitive bodybuilder as you are, um, and you, when you have to get real serious, not just you know the level of seriousness you have year round, but when it comes time to prep, how do uh, how do your how do your family respond to that? Uh, and, you know your fiance now too. Well, you know, since I met Kate, you know, prep has been the easiest it's ever been. Um, it's almost like I don't even feel like I'm prepping in a way. It's just, you know, obviously you, 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 you feel the, the low carbs and the, the extra cardio and all that stuff, but I'm, I'm a mellow laid back guy. Um, unless someone really fucks with me, but you know, I'm fine with it. I mean, my parents, everything's cool with them too, man. It's like, I think when I first started prepping, they were kind of like, oh, because they were buying me all my food up until <laughs> I was at least 20, 21, going on 22 until I got like a good job. Um, so they, you know, it's like, I, well, I kind of put myself in their position. I'm parents, I have a son. He's happy, I'm happy. I don't care if he's doing he's a painter i don't care if he's a musician I, I don't really care what he does as long as he's happy you know what i mean so but in the sense of prepping i mean every, every, i'm so grateful i thank god every day for everything i have and it's no more it's the people around me so it's you know caitlin my fiance my parents my siblings my my friends um my work environment everything so everything's kind of lined up for success i just really have to do what I have to do this year and I think the sky's the limit. So with your fiance, you were bodybuilding for a while before you met her, right? Correct. Yeah. So when like she first found out what you do and stuff, like how like how how was she like about it first initially when you guys first met? It's funny. Like um I was in a relationship for seven years and then that went to a halt because of body well went to an end because of bodybuilding so when i met caitlin um i was afraid to get into anything because i thought all girls were the same and you know you guys probably understand you guys probably all been through it too girls you know when when that those 16 weeks hit it's it's kind of all about you in a way so, yeah. so girls love attention everybody loves attention I mean, don't get me wrong, even even our animals, even our pets. I mean, er everybody loves attention. So when I first met Kate, I'm like, man, I, I like her, but I, I want her to understand, you know, what I do. And the first, you know, step was like telling her, I, <laughs> I don't know if she remembers this. Pulled up picture of Coleman, <laughs> biggest motherfucker I could find. And out. First date, first date, I said, this is what I want to look like one day. And she goes, okay that's cool <laughs> nice and i'm like all right and um you know for, for the for the few the first prep i did was the north uh nationals the one i seen you at with her right, right. so well first it was the boston show to qualify uh and then that show and man i knew i knew like the first couple of weeks because you know how it is you start adding certain compounds start dropping food you feel like you know yeah, you're on edge for sure yeah. Yeah. Time. So she stuck with it, and she made me feel very, very good. Felt like I wasn't even prepping. And you That's knew awesome. she was the one right then, eh? <laughs> I knew it. I, if I had the money for that ring I just got, I w it would have been on the finger already. Yeah, I know that, I can speak for Mo when I say uh, it's, uh, it's super important when you have that support system at, at, with you and, and at home. Like when I met Morgan, we, went, uh, we were doing the same competition, and then we were actually going on the same vacation at the same resort thereafter, uh, coincidentally. So we got to spend time together and meet each other's significant others and talk about how important um, your support system is. And when you're an uh, elite level bodybuilder, like you know, all three of us are, and you dive all the way into a prep, you need someone in your corner that understands uh, what you're going through and uh, how, why you're acting the way you are. And, you know, they can, uh, after a little while, they can tell, you know, oh, you, you made this change, I can tell, or you're doing this, aren't you? Or when do you, when are you going to, you know, cut the carbs? Give me, give me some warning. And then they, but uh, when you have a, uh, someone in your corner like that, it makes a huge difference because 
you're spending all your time with that person and you're going to have your life with them afterwards too, right? Exactly. And you don't want to do anything stupid to ruin that. <laughs> yeah, totally. So what, how old were you when you competed in your, in your first show? And like, what were your thoughts after your first show? Like, is that when you knew bodybuilding was definitely for you and you wanted to keep going with it or how did that go? No, definitely not. Um, I think my first show, I was 21, uh, was just got done with college for good. Cause after that, I actually, uh, didn't continue. And then that was it. Um, so that, that summer of turning 21 and I didn't even know you were supposed to get a coach or you had to coach or there was options of a coach. I, I just learned that about two and a half years ago. So, um, I just went in. I'm like, fuck it. I'm like, what's the lose? You know, let's just do this, have fun. Like, I don't know where it's going to take me. Um, you know, obviously money was so tight. Money was like maybe 50 bucks a week for everything that I had. So we could all relate it there. So a lot of tuna, you know, stuff like that. But I was also a bouncer at the time, you know, trying to make a little, a little money. So a couple of days a week, I would do that. So I get off of these shifts at like 2, 3 a.m. And I'll be driving home with my buddy because we carpooled. And he's like, yo, I want some Wendy's. I'm like, yeah, let's get some Wendy's. That's good. It's like meat and like carbs and shit. Yeah. I would be eating Wendy's. No, no, no shit. And like, I didn't look too bad. I mean, I took second in like, it was a NAB I did. And I took second out of like six guys in my class. It was like a 20 to 23 or something. How much did you weigh? Uh, 230. 230. Starting out. 230. And bro, that was basically natural. Just yeah. like bit, no money, like whatever I can get, pro hormone or yeah, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. It was. Um, it wasn't Fine, anything yeah. like, you know, at this level. But, you know, and then my thing was this. This is how I kind of knew I might have had some type of gift because my back was good. My back, I, like I said, I, that whole prep, I worked out in the basement. So I didn't even have a gym member. Holy shit. Respect. I might have got some passes or those like that, but I was in, I was in my basement for most of that prep, so I didn't have you know what I have available now, but my back was pretty good. So this guy came up to me backstage. He's like, "Man, you ever hear the MPC?" I'm like, "No, what the hell is that MPC?" He goes, "There's a show next week. It's a, a Muscle Beach something MPC show in Jersey, New Jersey. Why don't you go to that one?" I'm like, "All right." So I scraped up the money for that. You know, mom, dad, can I get 150 bucks entry fee? <laughs> uh, yeah, but this is the last time. <laughs> Whatever, I do that. I took second in the uh, heavyweights because I dropped below uh, 225. Um, and that was that, like, men. That was, was, like, men at the time. It was, like, four or five guys that took second. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'm, I think I'm doing pretty good here. And then, you know, as time goes on, uh, within one year, I met up with um, – He's my friend uh, Dominic Mustachio. It was yeah, my friend. He's a, is he Dom Super Sliced on Instagram? Yeah, Dom Super Sliced. Right. So 21, we linked up. We worked together for four weeks, and I won my first overall. Um, it was the John Kemper Classic in New Jersey. I won the Supers in the overall. Um, nice. Still, like, only four weeks of, like, kind of knowing what a diet was to a point. And, um, I think my body's just tricky, man, because even, like, nowadays, like, we're still trying to figure this fucking, fucking yeah. body out, but you know how it is. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, man, wow, talking about all this really brings back a lot. <laughs> I bet. So, from that point, so you won the first overall. So, yeah. I kind of found out about you, I guess, when you signed with Animal. And yeah. I remember seeing that, and, like, you know, everyone loves Animal. Like, Animal was, like, one of the first companies I ever paid attention to because – they're so iconic. And like, I know, you know, Frank McGrath. Frank. Okay. Yeah. So, Frank all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So Frank, like he's an awesome guy. He, he's from Newfoundland. He's like the only pro bodybuilder from where I'm from. And I know Randy's really familiar with him too, because he's from like the Atlantic provinces. So Frank is like a legend where I live. So yeah. like any, and because of that, I loved animal. Like that was my brand. I paid attention to growing up, coming up through the sport. And that's, that's where I was first introduced to you because I was like, oh, man, like, look at this guy. He's the same age as me. He's absolutely huge. 
And, uh, you know, it was like, you know, he picked up animal, picked him up. So he must be like legit, which obviously you are. So just talk about that a little bit, like how that happened and, and what that's done for you. Yeah. So, you know, a funny question I get asked a lot and I can't answer it because I don't know how is how do you get sponsored by animal? And I say, I don't know. They reached out to me and I don't know how the fuck they found me. Cause I had 800 followers on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. And so after that overall, uh, in Jersey, so Universal and Animal are the same brand. Um, they're like father, mother, daughter kind of thing. Yeah. So obviously we're, we're like, let's say our package comes, it's from Universal Nutrition, you know? So Universal is in New Jersey. And I guess I was at the show, I won the overall, which the competition wasn't obviously near like a national show or like USA is North America, something like that. But I won it. I still got the trophy, you know, I won. So I guess someone saw that and I don't know how they contacted me or found my number. They somehow found my number and I'm training people because I still train people to this day. And I get a text. He goes, hi, Vincenzo. This is uh, Eric Swartz. So Eric Swartz, his name on Instagram is natural guy. Yeah. He's, I'm familiar with him. Yeah. Yeah. He's been with the animals since like day one. Right. So I'm like, what in the world is going on? And he's like, can you come to you to Jersey for an interview? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. When? <laughs> He's like, oh, how about this Wednesday? I think it was like a Monday or something. I'm like, yeah, hell yeah. Bang. I'm there. No doubt. And um, so then he cancels on me. He goes, oh, can you come next week, Thursday? So another like week after. I'm like, shit. So, of course, you know, I go. I waited that whole week, all excited, looking up all the animal guys, you know, looking at uh, all the supplements they get and stuff. So I go, I go to Universal Headquarters, and now I had no idea about a they, that Animal Pack was interested in me. I thought it was more of a Universal sponsorship. Um, so I get there, I'm sitting there, and there's a table of 12 people, or 10 to 12 people, and me at the end like this. And they're just firing questions at me. What wow, animal? That's intense. If you were in the jungle, what what what's your favorite color and why? Like fucking questions you wouldn't even know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. So um so after that they're like so what do you think of the animal brand? I'm like, wait, animal of uh, animals crazy. I still remember picking up the black and white of Frank and me like I wonder how that guy's life is. That's probably the craziest life and that's so out of my reach. I wouldn't even you know, ever expect that. And they're like, oh, we want to do this thing with Animal. We get a young guy, you know, you're 21 um, or 22. Um, and we want to see how big he can get. So I was like 260. And I'd never been over that. And they're like, do you think you can get to 300 pounds? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but I'll try. Yeah. So, um, so 22... Um, no, so so going back to Universal, so they say, all right, so we have like three more people we're bringing in, so we'll get back to you within a month. And I'm like, okay, fuck, that sucks. Yeah. Like a, you know. A I wonder who the other people were. Yeah. So they, they sent me home with like all the products and stuff. So it was awesome. It was cool. It was just a great experience. I even got to experience that, you know. But um, so going back to like how i got signed so I'm, I'm training one day i kind of forgot about it you know get it off your mind i was definitely a little anxious to get a response so i i my phone pops up an email it says possible contract i'm like oh shit i run outside i call my father i'm like dad listen to this let's read it together i read it it was like what any 22 year old to ever wish for from a supplement sponsor and uh i i still to this day bro i i thank god every day i'm with animal pack I don't. I couldn't see myself ever leaving or ever going to anyone else, and that's that's it, man. History. Crazy, man. Yeah, I've I've always wanted to know how that uh how that all like you know came to fruition, but uh I I totally agree with you, man. I think you're a perfect fit for that company, and like just along with like how your size and uh you know that whole like dungeon gym thing that you had going on, like training in the basement, like that's how you started. I think that all fits just like so perfect with that brand and what they stand for. So, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty awesome, man. So, uh, Randy, do you have any more questions there for him? Um, yeah, I guess I wanted to know if you had 
your own uh, philosophy on training uh, and and because uh, it sounds like you started from just using the bare minimum and at some point you would have upgraded and got access to a lot more things but th did you automatically just start using everything or you still just stick with the basics well like i said you know i i stick with you know the home the home gym until i actually got to college once i got to college they had the the gym there and uh, it was for mostly like the football training so we actually had to follow like a, a workout every day but it was like it was like fucking stupid. It was like almost like a powerlifting thing to where like they test you every month to get your max bench for yeah. one max squat, max um hang clean. So it was like Olympic lifts. And I'm like, hmm, but I wanna like do bicep curls. And I wanna do like side ladder. Like I wanted to, you know, start building myself up. So um that's when I really started like with a real gym and then um I started with the barbell rows, you know, stuff like that. But Really, like, no matter what gym I go to, I always, like, veer off to just the free weights or I veer off to just sticking with the basic shit, you know, no matter what machines come out. Like, I have um, three gyms that I work at. So it's one chain, but it's three gyms owned by one guy. And the newest gym has, like, all Prime, um, all that new stuff, voice, and they're great machines, but I always kind of veer off and – just try and keep keep it with the free weights, you know. But I use them, but I like to keep it basic, man. And that's why I keep trying to keep trying to preach to people, especially younger kids. Like, there's nothing fancy that that's gonna build the muscle, and to get to an ultimate size or whatever it is you're trying to obtain, 220, 230, 300, whatever it is, you know, just keep it basic, keep it simple. Yeah, totally. So, so specific, uh, program, or do you uh, kind of trained by feel now that you've been doing it a while i totally train by feel um just depending on how i feel if i need a rest day after three or four days i'll take one um but as long as i'm getting all my muscles in one week it doesn't matter what what order it is so do you right now do you train like one body part per week or do you do you like mix them up and do like ch uh, chest with shoulders or like how do you go about like what's your training split typically look like so for example like Monday, I'll do uh, chest, the tries, and then Tuesday, I'll do, let's say, hands or quads and calves, one or the other. Then Wednesday, uh, I did shoulders. Uh, Thursday, I took off. Friday, I did back. Today, we did quads. And then I'd throw an arm day in there somewhere. Cool, cool. An arm, you know, 30, 40 minutes, that's all you need. Yeah. Um, I, you know, these people say, oh, I spent three hours in the gym. Like, oh, what, do you sleep there for half the day? Well, <laughs> how do you work out for three hours? Oh, yeah. If you no, work I, out with me, you'd be working out for 30 minutes begging to leave. So I don't care how you're in there for three hours. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And that kind of leads to my next question for you, which is like, are you more of like a, like a volume type trainer or do you focus more on like working up to like one or two really heavy sets and just like kind of going for the more intensity type of thing? I think I kind of like base my training off like a Dorian Yates style, like uh, very, very slow, like contracting. As long as I'm getting like eight to 12, like solid reps. Um, I stick with a lot of like hammer strength for back, a lot of rows, but each of those, each of those reps, I'm, I'm just trying to execute as perfect as I can. And I think that kind of came with me like a year and a half ago to where like a year and a half ago, I was just kind of like, trying to do as much as I can, but now I've kind of narrowed it down to certain exercises and just execute each rep as slow and best as I possibly can. Okay, and one more question on the training. Uh, so you're known for your back, really, like your back is absolutely outstanding. So are you a deadlift guy or are you a rack pull guy? So <laughs> coming up, this is a great question. I get it a lot. So coming up in my early years, of course, I'm off the floor. I'm off the floor. I'm yeah. off the floor every week, every week, every week. Bang, bang. Get up to like 675 deadlifts. Like nice. very, that's pretty good. I mean, that's heavyweight. Yeah. That's awesome. So I go up 675 again the next week. Pop, pop goes my fucking lat. I'm like, shit. shit. You know, so I have a small indent like under my 
my left armpit. Uh, it's not too visible because I think my lats are so big, especially on stage, you can't even see it. But um, from the back, you can't see anything. But after that, man, I'm kind of like scarred. Um, and then like, you know, my, my spine's a little off. I just got some x-rays back. So we're kind of putting that back in place. Nothing serious, nothing, nothing serious. Like it doesn't even hurt. I just yeah. got it done. So right now I just right above the knees, I start the bar and um, I just rack dead, man. And oh it's God. been working. Something's working. Oh Something's yeah, man. No doubt about that. Your back's looking great. So, and right now you're, uh, you just recently started working with Matt Jansen, correct? Yeah, so me and Matt worked together. We started working together in October, end of October last year. And uh, we did USA's together, where I placed fourth. And we did North Americans together, where I placed sixth. And now currently, we are now working together um, okay. in my own offseason. Okay, right on. That's cool. Yeah. Um, did you find much of a trip? He's a great guy. He's a great trainer. Yeah. I have nothing bad to say about him. That's for sure. Um, he does the best with me and, um, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Um, Randy, you got anything else for him? Yeah. I was wondering if, um, there was any specific, uh, you know, body parts that you were prioritizing. Like, what do you feel you need to improve on right now to get to the next level? Uh, definitely for me, I feel like a lot of people are going to say, oh, his legs, isn't that? Yeah, but my legs are bigger than you guys, so shut up. No, I'm <laughs> yeah. um, my arms, um, I feel like my biceps are just small. I don't know why. So I want to bring up my arms. I want to bring my hands from the back for sure, hands from the side for sure, my glutes, absolutely. I think my quads are good. They could definitely come up, obviously, more, without a doubt. Um, and then I'm going to start doing abs this year and see what happens. Hopefully my abs get, get nice for the show. Cool. I just rely on the diet, but I'm gonna start religiously doing it for the contest. So you're, uh, yeah, obviously, again, just going back to like how big you are. <laughs> um, I'm just interested because me and Randy talked about this on our last podcast about me because like I, I currently got up to like 332 pounds. So I gave a rundown of like my peak off season diet and what it looked like. Uh, so I was just wondering if you could do the same. Like not, I know like right now you're you're, you're probably still kind of reverse dieting out of your prep or whatever. But like what like what's like the highest amount of food you've been you've eaten like at the peak of your last off season? Say? So I'll give you I'll give you a run of one of the craziest off seasons I did. It was the one when Animal told me I had to get up to three hundred. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it. So. Dude, it was, like, insane. So, from what I can remember, uh, I probably have it written down, but if I go to search for it, I'm going to kill time, and I don't want to do that. So, I'd rather just tell you. Oh, yeah. Well, there she is. <laughs> um, so, Animal had this product. It was Animal Mass. It was, like, a powder. And I think four or five scoops was, like, 850 calories or something absurd. So, I'd wake up. Um, I'd start my day with a serving of that. I would throw two bananas in there. I would throw as much peanut butter as I wanted. There's no measuring going on. <laughs> um, and then I would have two bagels. I would put uh, peanut butter on both bagels and toast them. So I would have almost a thousand calorie shake. Then the two bagels, which is like 50 carbs a piece. This powder had 120 carbs. So it was like almost 200 carbs right there. More, actually. Then an hour after that, an hour and a half after that, I would have 12 ounces of ground turkey, um, two cups of rice, and I was supposed to put veggies in there, but I didn't. Uh, <laughs> then after that, I would do 10 ounces of ground. As as you can see, I'm saying ground because I couldn't freaking eat like solid chicken or solid steak, so the ground stuff was just easy. Yeah, I would do 10 ounces of uh, ground beef and... 12 ounces of sweet potato. Then pre-workout meal would be, it was a little lighter. It was like eight ounces of ground chicken or turkey and like a cup and a half of white rice. Uh, Post-workout, I would go to any fast food place I wanted to. And that's God's honest truth. I don't suggest this. Every day for over a year, I ate fast food. I'm not proud of that, but I didn't have any health risks or any of that because I've been my blood work, of course, but Every day. So I'll go to Wendy's usually. That's my spot. It's the Dave Palumbo diet. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't look like Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I would get two doubles, uh, Dave's double, whatever, a large fry, um, the good chicken sandwich, not the 99 cent one, the good one, the thick one. I would get that and a Diet Coke, of course, Diet. Oh, yeah, that's the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> After that, I head home. I would have another 12 ounces of white, some type of white meat and two cups of rice. And then before bed, I would match my breakfast. And if I was really full, I would put eight whole eggs in the blender, whole eggs, two cups of orange juice, and like a cup and a half of oatmeal, blend it up and just knock it down. Holy shit. Randy, I think he has me beat, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I was, on Morgan's diet last week. 326 pounds. Oh, yeah. So th is that the highest you gotten up to? Yeah, ever. And I'll never do it again, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm with you on that, man. It, it is, it's like a full-time job eating that much food. And if you got, like, other st shit to do, like, just trying to get your training in and you got to work, like, trying to fit all that into one day is, like, it gets pretty hectic. Dude, I would tell myself, all right, I'm going to train five days this week. And then after I had, like, three or four of the meals in the morning, I would go in my car to get that fast food meal or whatever meal it was, and I'd pass out in the park. Oh, yeah. Because I worked. So I would train people in the morning. And then I had like a two or three hour break. I would train, shower, and then get back on the, the gym floor to train the rest of the people. I had to work a lot growing um, at that time. And I would be like, and just pass out. And just fucking with Jander would come to the window and knock on the door. This little Mexican guy, and I would be like, yo! Like, I better knock him out. He would wake me up and thought something was wrong. But I think I was just so tired and like, fucking couldn't move. My belly was out to here. Like, it was just fucking. I'll just never do it again. Or if so, I did, go, so, sorry about that. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I said if I ever tried to get that heavy again, I would definitely take a different uh, direction. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes no, that food was twice a day. Not <laughs> yeah. So I, I assume that led you to getting a CPAP machine. Yes. Yeah, that, that's something I experienced this, this last off season. I got a, about halfway through it. I, when I hit 300 pounds – my girlfriend made me go get one because she was losing so much sleep because of me snoring and, and all that. Yeah. I'm sure your girlfriend can relate to that pretty well. She's looking at me now laughing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It so but so from using that, I bet you found a big difference. Eh? Oh yeah. I mean, it's a pain in the dick to start. Like yeah. you put it on, you just feel like, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night, like you rip it off your head. Like what's going on? Yeah. But um, I think I adjusted to it fairly well. It only took me like a couple weeks to get used to. And yeah. um. Yeah, it's so weird, bro. The minute I hit, uh, like, 285, 290, I start snoring. Yeah. Because during the prep, I didn't snore. But I was light. I was 265, 270, the highest. And then, like, now, I'm, I'm like, 290 right now. Um, if, I, if I don't put that thing on, she's smacking me. Roll over. Get out. You know, put that <laughs> thing on. <laughs> yeah. It was so bad at one point before I got it that I was, I was getting – Sleeping on the couch out here. <laughs> okay. I'm like, that's it. I'm pulling. I'm getting this shit done. That's it. Yeah. So I got a question for you just because I'm about to start my prep like in the next couple months. Uh, once you started losing weight, did you still have to wear it throughout your entire prep or did it get to a point where you could stop using it? Yeah, I took it off. Oh, anyway. nice. Good. Yeah. And um, oh. it was fine. Uh, I didn't even bring it to the shows. Like, um, I think it's just, you know, the bigger you get, the, the more – the more vulnerable you're going to get to have to wear it, you know? So, well, I got right something now, to look forward to then. Yeah. So, you know, you're going to get lower, 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 and maybe hit like 285. You'll feel like, ah, oh, maybe I'll take it off, try it. You know, but if she's smacking you in the middle of the night, bro, just keep it on. It's not worth it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, 100%, man. You're right about that. Um, so Randy, do you got anything else for him? Yeah, well, I, I think uh, we're starting to run short on times. So what's what's next for you? Do you have another show planned? Do you have a extended off season on the horizon? What's going on? Um, that's a good question because I'm I'm thinking right now about it. <laughs> um, next year, 2020, we're gonna do something. Uh, I'm thinking. I I don't know the exact show, but I will compete in 2020. I'll just tell everyone that. Okay, sweet. So are you, are you like qualified to continue doing the pro qualifiers? Or are you going to have to requalify or what's up with that? No, I'm good for this year coming up, uh, mm -hmm. placing top five in the USA, placing fourth 
Right. So now I'm good for a calendar year. So I'm good for all three big shows here. Um, and yeah, I'll just, uh, just, I don't know. Just I'm keep getting bigger until so, then, eh? What did you say? I'm sorry. You're just going to keep on getting bigger until then? I'm going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, man. How much do you weigh right now? I like 290. Okay, sweet. So do you have like a number in mind that you want to hit? Or are you more so just worried about putting on like quality size right now? Uh, 310, 315 max, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. And I, uh, well, that, yeah. I just feel like I'm like shoving my face down. I can't move. Yeah, I hear you, man. Yeah, it kind of makes it makes it hard to train in that. Um, just one more last question about the your last prep that you did. I'm just curious because you said you got up to 326. So, uh, like, how much weight did you have to lose to get in the contest shape? So, that the 326 was that first off season I told you about. Okay, so right, 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 right. I only got up to 318. Okay. Um, and then I think on stage I was like 270, 272, something like that. Okay, yeah, so not so too bad. Like 30, 40 something pounds, yeah. How, so so, and how, how many weeks was your prep? Like, I think we started at 20 weeks. Okay, right on, yeah. So you took so it nice like and easy. The first week or two, I lost like 20 pounds, you know, of like water and shit. Yeah. Oh, so, but I think I'm just going to take a different step this year on my own in my off season. I kind of know what to do, man. And like, I know the do's and don'ts, and, like, I know when to push it. Like, I think I would have been perfect at 312 and then just, like, kept going, you know, with that and, like, molded a little better than gained the extra, like, almost 10 pounds because that came off, like, instant. Yeah. It wasn't even – I shouldn't even have gained it, to be honest. Yeah, no, I, I hear you, man. I, I totally understand. Health into the consideration because I'm in this for longevity, especially, uh, you know, I am – big into other things in life besides bodybuilding um you know so i'm always taking that into consideration as well what are Absolutely, some of those man. things what do you what do you do outside of bodybuilding uh i like to go for long walks I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah yeah me too uh, i mean just like other shit like i'm not this guy like a like a rome like nothing against roman he's one of my really really good friends but if you talk to roman or train with him there's no conversation besides bodybuilding and it's bodybuilding and he's like a robot robotic to it. And that's great. That's a crazy mentality. I'm sure that was like a Dorian Yates type of thing, but uh, I'm like more, more of like, um, I'm not so one dimensional. I mean, I'm a diehard bodybuilder as you guys know, but you know, it's not like life or death for me. Yeah. So you do try to keep some balance in your bodybuilding life with real life. Yeah. Without yeah. a doubt, it makes me – it keeps me sane. It makes me very happy. That's great to hear, man. Well, I think uh, that's a good note for us to finish up the podcast on, man. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you can probably got some eating to do. Yeah, man. Well, I'm, yeah. I had a nice Real Gains Universal shake while I'm watching. Oh, uh, there you go. Yeah, man, feel free to plug anything while you're here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, where, where can people find you? I'm sorry. I was speaking over you. What would you say? I was just saying, where can people find you, um, you know, on the social medias? And can they get in You mentioned you're a trainer. Can people get in contact with you for that? Yeah, uh, absolutely. My, um, my Instagram is at Vincenzo Massoni, one word. Um, Facebook, I'm on there, too. I haven't been on in years, but I have one. Um, and my email is massarmy1 at gmail.com for training. Um, if you guys are in the New York area, I do uh, some home training in the dungeon as well. So that's uh, that's nice. an option too. Man, if I'm ever in the area, I'm going to take you up on that. I want to get down in the dungeon and get in a greasy session with you. I don't think there's room for both of us, bro. But we'll try. <laughs> we'll make it work, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got to come down to 280. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe after my next show, eh? Yeah, right after that, you come right to me. We'll yeah, okay, man. Sounds good, dude. Well, I just got to say, man, I, I really appreciate you coming on. Like, we were super excited to have you. And uh, you didn't disappoint. That was, a, that was a great interview, man. So, thank you very much. No problem, man. Anytime you need me, if there's any topics you guys want to discuss and I'm useful, you could always just text me, and then we'll get on here. All right, I appreciate that, man. We'll talk to you again soon. All right, guys. Have a good one. See you later. You too. Take care.